Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to print a perfect first layer on your Sidewinder X1 3D printer, no matter how warped your build plate is, with mesh bed leveling. If you're a lucky owner of a Sidewinder X1 3D printer and you struggle to print even first layers, don't worry, you're not alone. This is because a lot of these machines shipped with a warped build plate. Common fixes for this, or to buy an aftermarket build plate, or to buy some sort of auto bed leveling probe, like a BL Touch. But those options cost money and they can be a bit complicated to set up and install. But fear not, there is a free option that just requires a simple firmware update. Now, I know messing with the firmware can be a bit of a scary subject for some people, which really deters them from even entertaining the thought. But don't worry, I've done all the hard work so you don't have to. I've compiled a new version of firmware for the touchscreen with a new UI that has the required options needed Plus, I've compiled Marlin version 2.0.8.1 with the same options for the main board. I'm going to take you through step by step on how to update the firmwares and then how to go through the mesh bed leveling process. So then you could print even first layers all over the build plate. I have download links for those files in the video description. The download link will take you to this page. Go ahead and click on the green code button, then download zip. When the download is complete, open the file's download location. Next, extract the zip file into its own folder. Open the folder, and inside you'll see five files. Firmware.hex, leveltest.gcode, leveltest.stl, license, and tftfirmware.zip. Go ahead and extract the tftfirmware.zip into its own folder. Next, we're going to need a micro SD card, the smaller the better, format with a FAT32 file system. Open a new folder, then right click on the SD card's drive. Then click Format. Make sure the file system says FAT default, and Quick Format is enabled. Then click Start. Click OK, and it should format. Close that and open up that drive. Then copy the contents of the TFT firmware folder onto the SD card. With the printer powered off, insert the micro SD card into the micro SD slot on the printer. Then power on the printer and the TFT firmware should start updating automatically. This takes a few minutes. When the update is done, the TFT will restart and you will be greeted with a new startup logo and a new UI. Now it's time to update the main board firmware. For that to work, we're going to need to disconnect the serial connection going between the TFT and the main board. In order to do that, we're going to have to gain access to the electronics underneath. First, ensure that the printer is powered off and unplugged. Next, carefully tip the printer over on its left side propping the base up on something like a roll of filament to give us easier access to the electronics. The cover is held down with six screws. If you are worried about damaging your anti-tamper sticker, don't worry, you could just remove the front four screws and the cover is flexible enough that you can gain enough access to get the job done. I've already removed my anti-tamper sticker, so I'm going to remove the entire cover. If you're completely removing the cover, be careful when taking out the last screw to not drop the cover so you don't break the wires going to the fan or break the connector off of the main board that the fan plugs into. The factory hot glued all the connections inside the printer and I found the easiest way to get them off is to heat them up with a heat gun or a blow dryer on low heat till the glue is just soft enough to disconnect a connector. This should only take 5 or 10 seconds of heating up for this to work. Find the wire going from the fan to the main board. The 
The same thing will need to be done to the serial connection going to the touchscreen. While the glue is still hot, you can get in there and try to peel the excess off. Now carefully tip the printer back up on its base. Using the USB cable provided with your printer, go ahead and plug your printer into your computer. Although it is not necessary because the USB provides power to the main board, I do recommend that you plug in the main power and turn it on to mitigate any chances of a power loss during the upload process. For this, you will need to install Prusa Slicer if you don't already have it. I will have a link for it in the video description. Do note that most, if not all, slicers can be used to update your main board firmware. I prefer using Prusa Slicer because in my opinion, it is the least complicated software to update your printer with. Go into Prusa Slicer and on the top of the window, click on the configuration tab. Then click on flash printer firmware. It should automatically detect the port the printer's USB is connected to. Click on Browse next to the Firmware Image window and navigate to the downloaded location of the previously downloaded file. Select the file name firmware.hex, then click Open. Next, click Flash and the firmware will update. This only takes about a minute. When it is finished, click Close and exit out of Prusa Slicer. Now go ahead and unplug the USB and power off the printer. With the firmware flash, we can go ahead and tip the printer back over and plug the touchscreen back in. When plugging the serial connector back in, ensure you line it up correctly on the contacts. If you do happen to plug this in incorrectly, don't worry, you won't damage anything. The screen will just fail to power up. Now we can go ahead and tip the printer back upright. I recommend leaving the cover off until we can get a good successful first print out of it. Go ahead and plug the printer in and power it up. The first thing we're going to want to do since updating the firmware is to do a PID auto tune. I have this option embedded into the TFT firmware. You will go to tools, more, and click on PID auto tune. You won't notice it doing anything at first. This all runs in the background and it takes approximately 10 minutes for the process to run. What the PID auto tune does is tune the heat bed and the hot end to ensure that whatever temperature you select for your printing stays consistently at that temperature. If we go back, you'll see that the hot end will heat cycle several times, and then when it's done, the bed will heat cycle. I'm gonna let this run, and then we'll go to the next step when it's through. You'll know that the tune is done when both the hot end and the heat bed start to come down in temperature. Now that the PID auto tune is complete, we're going to go ahead and go through the leveling process. First, we need to get a good corner level, and then we can move on to the mesh level. Go ahead and go to your tools, more, and I have a setting for preheat PLA. Click on that, and that will heat up the hot end to 210 degrees Celsius and the bed to 60 degrees Celsius. If you would like to use a different temperature for your leveling, you would go to tools and heat, just like in the stock firmware, and use whatever heat setting you'd like. All right, now that we're up to temperature, we can go ahead and level the corners. Go to tools, level, first corner. The printer will home. And then go to the first corner. Go through the corner leveling as you normally would. Go 
all right, I've got a really good corner level. Now it's time to move on to the mesh leveling. Go back, click on more, and you'll have two buttons here. Begin mesh first point, and then mesh next point, two through nine. We'll start with the first point. The printer will home again, and it will go to a, the first point for its mesh leveling. You use these up and down arrows to move the z-axis up and down in increments of 0.01 millimeter. When you feel you've got the correct gap here, click on next. And do this for all nine points. When you get done with the last point, go ahead and press save to EEPROM. And that will save the 3D mesh that this created to the storage in the printer. If you're unfamiliar with how mesh leveling works, it creates a 3D image of the contour of your build plate. That way, as it prints, it could actually move the Z axis up and down to follow that contour. In the firmware, I have the fade height set to 10 millimeters. What that means is it's going to take the first 10 millimeters of your vertical height to slowly remove the compensation from the mesh till it starts printing perfectly flat at the 10 millimeter mark. Now you can go ahead and load up your favorite PLA and we'll get a test print out of this thing. In the file we previously downloaded, there's a level test G code. Copy that onto a USB drive, and we're gonna use that to do our test print. Before we do our test print, we wanna make sure that our build plate's nice and clean. I used some isopropyl alcohol, 90% or better, does the trick just fine. Go ahead and go to your settings, and ensure that your source is set to USB. Go back and print that G code. This test print is going to print a small square over each of the nine points we did the mesh leveling. You can watch it as it prints, and if it seems like it's printing too close or too far away from the build plate, you could adjust that by going to Options and More and you could baby step either up or down in increments of 0.01 millimeters. So far, it's looking right on point. I would say that this is a very successful test print. I know that my build plate is quite low in the middle, and this mesh leveling has been able to compensate for it quite well. That I would call a perfect first layer. Now that we know that the firmware upload worked and we got a successful test print, we can go ahead and put the cover back on the printer. Don't forget to plug your fan back in when reinstalling the cover. When installing the cover, don't tighten the screws until you have all of them started so it makes them easier to line up. And there we have it, mesh bed leveling for your Sidewinder X1 3D printer. So now you can get that perfect first layer no matter how warped your build plate is. 
you liked what you see here, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.